CNBC, Bloomberg, CNN, uh, Fox News, they're all calling me. <laughs> I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. I need the visibility. I'm re- I, I, I tell everybody I'm like the guy in Godfather, Hyman Roth, right before they shot him at the airport. He said, I'm retired. He said, I'm a retired executive living on a pension. I'm a retired money manager living on investment <laughs> income. That was Leon Cooperman on CNBC yesterday responding to a, to a new uh, anti-billionaire uh, campaign ad by Elizabeth Warren. Uh, the presidential hopeful is now selling $25 billionaire tears mugs on her uh, campaign website, referencing uh, Cooperman getting emotional, talking about the 2020 election. Join us now, Jason Furman, former Council of Economics Advisors Chairman and uh, Harvard Kennedy School uh, professor, and Douglas Holt Aiken, Congressional Budget Office Director and American Action a forum president. Did you ever think that I'd be talking about you constantly in reference to, uh, and I'm talking to Jason here, hold on one second. <laughs> uh, quoting Jason Furman and Larry Summers in, uh, in the, the, some of the analysis done by those uh, Berkeley professors uh, that worked, I guess, uh, at least advised Elizabeth Warren on, on the wealth tax, and, and you pushed back on their methodology and, and their conclusions, right? Um, I think it's a shame because I think taxes on high-income households are lower than they used to be. Right. I think they're lower than they should be, but their analysis really exaggerated quite a lot, made a lot of assumptions that you know, no serious economist They didn't publish make. a paper. But do you think it was the right thing for the New York Times to publish it as, as fact on the op-ed pages? You when, know, I, I think it's a tricky issue right now because you have a lot of economists but doing really exciting in, research. I, I, but I, it's made yeah. its way into the jargon now that it's a fact that the, the 400 richest Americans pay less than the bottom quintile. And it's, it's, it's now a fact, but it's not a fact. Right. Yeah. Oh, no. We have a progressive tax system. When right. you take into account spending, we have an even more progressive system. You know, I think we should make it even more progressive. And I think it's okay. a shame a that this tax? analysis distracted from where we should, should be going. Should we do it? Is her, we'll get the Doug, but is, is her plan, the wealth tax with the two cents, et cetera, et cetera, is that the way to do it? Or do you want to do it a different way? I think there's better ways to do it. I think we can fill in a lot of loopholes in the existing system. I think we can tax capital gains at death. And I think we should give serious consideration to mark to market taxation of capital gains. It's a serious idea Senator Ron Wyden and others are working on now. It's hard to implement. Mark it's hard to implement. I think, it's, I think it is a enough of a benefit economically that it's worth seeing if we can but, figure out how to make it I mean, it why work. not just capture so that you're going to get those gains eventually when the stock is sold? Like, end of life, whatever it may be. The idea of mark-to-market on that stuff seems so unruly when you watch uh, the big swings that you see in uh, stock market averages, let alone what you see in some individual stocks. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there are plans out there. Uh, Economist from the American Enterprise Institute, Alan Viard, who worked in the Bush administration, has a plan, build some smoothing in that helps take some of the rough edges off of it, but then makes it even more complicated. I just don't understand I'm not, why. Like, why, why do you want it right now? As long it, as you eventually get it. As long as you eventually get it and there's no way to weasel out right. of it. Look, look, you're right. I mean, if you tax it at death, you're getting a lot of the way there. I think that's right. a no-brainer. I think every economist should be, everyone should be for that. Right. Um, along the way, I think it's a problem that we have a system that essentially makes taxation voluntary for a set of people. So, Doug. You choose whether or not to be taxed right. by your selling decisions. Right. Uh, Doug. What, what should we yeah. do? What, what do you, what, you've heard a lot. You've been, you've been uh, patient. <laughs> no, I, I want to agree with uh, Jason on the, the wealth tax analysis. I think there are a lot of holes in that. It's been badly oversold. You know, the idea of, of, of publishing this tax rate for 2018 before the filing season even closed, that tells you sort of the quality of that analysis. And I think people should just put that aside. If they want to get serious about having a more progressive tax system with more revenue from higher income individuals, we have existing vehicles to do it. We have an income tax. We have a corporation income tax. We can take those and, and do things like base broadening that affects high-income individuals. That was the state and local deduction. It was incredibly unpopular, but that's what that does, and, and that, that's the right way to go do it. I don't know if Jason was able. Uh, oh, yeah, no, I heard, I heard enough. You, you, you heard everything. How about overall um, where the party is right now? I'm talking about the Democratic Party, Doug. I, I, or, there's so going to be taxes and there's really going to be a lot of new programs. Is, that, is any of that going to, going to play in Peoria, you think? So I, I guess I'd say two things. Uh, first, if you take at face value sort of all the plans of, say, Elizabeth Warren as the, the, 
future uh, policy portfolio of the uh, Democratic Party, that that's just unthinkable. I mean, it, it's just fantasy land kind of budgeting. There isn't the money to do that. There, there isn't taking on the existing uh, problems in the federal budget. So, you know, no, that that's not really going to happen. Uh, it's also, I don't think, yet the majority view of the Democratic Party. I mean, I think you heard pretty clearly uh, Speaker Pelosi saying she wasn't for Medicare for all. And I think that reflects her caucus. If you look at, for example, the newly elected uh, Democrats in the, in the midterms, of the 60-ish uh, freshmen, 40 are, are folks who would be new Democrats by the Clinton standard. They're not progressive. So, you know, Elizabeth Warren is trying to capture the Democratic Party, but it's not yet done. And, and that's not representative of what will happen because it can't, nor what they really want to have happen yet.